Hey, I'm Scott. It's Azure Friday. I'm talking with Eric Gamma. We're looking at uh, the Visual Studio Online Experience and the live editing. You may have seen something like this on the web, codenamed the Monaco Editor. So we're, we're in the middle of editing our um, application here. And in the previous video, you said something about the language service. Right. It's very <coughs> vague. Where is, is it in the browser? Is it on the server somewhere? Yes. So um, one challenge is um, when you do coding, you want to have fast responses, right? right? So if you do IntelliSense, imagine you have a round trip to the server all the time. That's not very pleasant. Also, we do all the smartness, right? We find uh, this is not, these are really semantic references, right? Right. So uh, this shows me that orange is the right reference. Right. That's so a you selected here, yes. and it's noticed not as a search and replace, but as a symbol. That's really a symbol. And it's here and here exactly. and here and here. So and what happens behind it, we have an AST in the browser which gives us the type information and allows mm. to describe Abstract analysis. syntax tree. Right. So okay. which the language service is one of the, the key abstractions they provide us, right? Okay. And the abstract syntax with, with type information. So and this runs in the browser. Running in the browser. Right. Wow. And the cool thing is TypeScript compiler itself is written in TypeScript. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can why we can do that. I, I've, I've talked in, in presentations uh, about how we don't tend to use the power of the client. We treat websites like they're, exactly like they're dumb. We kiss you with that. Right? Oh, you like exactly. that? Exactly. No, because we run this in the browser, and the browsers are really fit today. Yeah. They have lots of memory. And even the Monaco code base, which is not shy, mm -hmm. around 200,000 lines of, Java, of TypeScript. Uh, we can run it and have the analysis, analysis done in the browser. Of course, you hit these limits somewhere, right? To be yeah, fair, of course, right? of course. So it's, it's not but unlimited. I think that there's a class of developer for whom JavaScript is basic form validation. Right. And there's a chasm that they need to jump over to write a legitimate application. And the prospect of writing something as complicated as a, you know, a, a language service, it would be so much easier in my mind to just, oh, I'll just send JavaScript to the server let those big beefy machines do the work. But you've right. got 8 gigs of RAM and a quad processor here yeah. in a, in a multi-core jittable JavaScript engine not yeah, doing exactly. any work. Yep. Was it TypeScript that made that possible for you to have such a complex thing? Or could you have just written it in straight JavaScript? OK, so now you mean the whole the Monaco thing? Well, well, there's the Monaco thing. There's a the language service. This is, this is a full app running in the browser here. That's the full app Quite running in the browser. It's, right, it has Git integrations or whatever. Right? It's pretty rich. Um, we started actually with JavaScript. We were the first adopters of TypeScript, which had another code name by then. Oh, wow. And we worked heavily with them because we are 200,000 lines. We want to have a good module structure. Mm -hmm. We use Node.js on the server. Right, you have common GS modules. We have AMD modules on the client to help us with the structure. So we really needed structure. And uh, we found out once we got to 30,000, 50,000 lines of code, now our code became more like uh, harder to change. No? Mm -hmm. It felt like uh, carving code in stone, right? Because yeah. you cannot You're change it. You're afraid to change it. Because uh, variables have no global unique names, right, or functions. So you can easily rename. Actually, by the way, we can rename here, right? We have just let me do some. Really, so refactoring, and that happens in the, the browser. In the browser, the right? And actually, see multi-cursor support here, right? You see nice. all the blinking there, right? We don't want that you lose that. You have multi. So that's the real cursor, and those are the yeah. pseudo cursors. Of course, you can also do it with. Uh, oops, no, that was another one. That was cool. No, you can also. Yeah, you can set your cursors as you want, right? And all the operations. Wow. Operate on the cursors, right? So just okay. <laughs> I just want to show no, you. It's, it's a real app. That's pretty cool. Uh, you that's, want really, no, that's legitimate. The metaphor is no. If you code in a browser, you have to do it with comfort, right? Of course. So we don't. You should not feel s uh, speed problems. Mm -hmm. So you spend a lot of time in making this efficient. And yeah, I don't want to type and then hit dot and then wait exactly. because I'm on a cell phone. Yeah. So, but okay. We notice we got to thirty thousand lines of code. We mm -hmm. start to adopt more and more of TypeScript. And at some point, we decide we, we throw the switch. We rewrite everything in TypeScript, which costs us some time. But I sure. don't think we have gotten to the size of code that is maintainable and we can evolve it right. without using TypeScript. So we're really grateful to the, to the TypeScript guys. So the, the, the editor is a component. And yes. then this, this, uh, the IDE Chrome, for lack of a better word, around it is itself another app which it's is consuming yes. this app. And you have a number of other sites that consume this. We talked about SkyDrive, the uh, uh, mobile, mobile services. services. Uh, Napa. Napa, the SharePoint online. The off, on, where you write Office extension. Office, Office extension. extension. And of course, TFS. 
And yeah, right, and yeah, tfs.visualstudio.com. It's the only thing you can do there that you can do in TFS, right? But I think, let me see. Oh, here's your, here's your git uh, commit that's been Right, in. exactly. So what change did I do here, right? And, and just, can it diff that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Word level diff, right? So uh, that's all client side now. And the scroll bar with the intelligence, that's part of the editor as well? Just, uh, these are markers, right? And mm -hmm. we, we, we decorate the code with it, and you get change bars as you change. So if you go to. Uh, um, no, so you can do inline. If you oh, do that. Uh, okay, and you can yeah, even so edit, right? You can edit, and it will update. See, as, oh, as I see, stuff, with the changes and, there. Yeah. Yep. So that's comfy. And I want to go back to the editor view. And we're showing a Node application, but C Sharp. Can so I C -sharp interestingly, as well? um, okay, you mean as a as a user? As a user, as a user, I've got a C Sharp and a Razor and right. JavaScript and mixed. Right. Mixed so um, you know, you know this app. You have shown it in depth, I guess, at the launch event. Right. So that's a C Sharp app, whatever. You can you can do it, right? We can have the same change and run model. Mm -hmm. So here I have some CSS, right? I can change the background. Well, and you even have some of the more advanced features that we've added, like uh, color swatches. You want to see some more advanced features? Well, yeah, I would like to see some more. Advanced. Can I quickly switch back to Let's this guy? Yeah. So more advanced features. Blow right. my mind. I want to blow your mind. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's our, the fact that there's the language services in the browser it blew my mind. I always assumed it was on the back end, so I'm already <laughs> exploded. And you're exploded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So right, you click. Oh, over, is that peak you, definition? Yeah, we get to that. That's How did you just, do that? No, wait, wait. That's just control <laughs> over. That's that. Now peak definition is, is that right? Yeah. You get the in place thing. Nice. And oh, what we wow. also do is kind of no peak references, which, for instance, who, who where is all this socket stuff used? Right. We do peak references. Right. Right. Then you see all the references. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice UI. Right. So. Oh, now I lost where I wanted to go. You Keyboard want to friendly, too. Hotkeys and all that? Yes, yes, yes. As you want. So we give you, uh, we make it very easy for you to discover this. Uh, we mm -hmm. have this, this widget now. Helps us to find your commands, helps to find your files. Mm -hmm. Also helps to find your stuff inside the file. Right, if I do an See, this, this is funny. I percent, and then you can navigate inside the file. I've been trying to convince the ASP.NET team that while Web Forms is great and MVC is fun, Web pages is such, has such power. CSS, HTML files, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and C Sharp in one file for small sites. My podcast sites are all done like that. And every time I have a small fix, I got to install Web Matrix, or I got to, you know, I mean, I got this. It's a hassle. And I always hey. find myself out and about you on a machine without that. So I'll be able to do that. Yeah. CSS, yes. HTML files. Yes, yes. Well, and CSS, uh, we do also less, right? So Less too? Cool. Yeah, if you do less. Now now you asked for it, right? So yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's complicated show it. stuff. Do you have any less in this I'd document? Try. Oh, no, I have some you do. less. There you go. The chat one. That's a chat one. Oh, that's a bit boring one. Let's take the other one. Uh, which one did you have? There was another less one that was... Um, Styles or less, I guess. Styles. Right? Oh, oh, there you see, go. So you there's some variables. variables, right? And you can, of course, this stuff you have, right? Nice. You know that one. Color, and pick, color picker? No. <laughs> you know, you know, you have memory, right? But of course, you have intelligence, a little bit intelligence for colors, right? Oh, hey. If you want. Yeah, and you've got um, vendor-specific prefixes. And all this stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And also note that this is um, this is now less, and you see, you have the same. Yeah, so you figured it out. And it's and again you selected it. And you can do the same coolness with renaming, right? Oh, OK. So yeah, symbols are symbols. So same, OK. Of, behind the scene, you have to do the same as we do for, for TypeScript. You have to build a language service, which mm -hmm. produces some AST that allows to do this anal analysis. Does it bring down the language services for everything in the project, or does it do it on a, on a like the first time it opens a less? It's the first time. So, so says, oh, he's bringing less. Let's get the AST and the information right. down. So, so you're familiar with the uh, AMDE? Sure. Modules, right? right? So we use AMD modules, and around that we have some uh, lazy loading infrastructure, right? You just have a descriptor loaded, and on the first load of the tab script file, we actually load the code using AMD. Yeah, it's, it seemed very responsive so far. Right. When you opened that, that less file, we didn't feel it. Yeah. But the yeah. first time you loaded the whole thing, it didn't feel bad either. That's true. 
that's true. Yeah. And actually, I can make changes in less. And if I want to compile it, I can even do that online here if I want to. Right? So I can you see this side by side editing now. Oh, that's the output window. How are you controlling the compilation? Is okay. it a make file or is it a we, are really, we want to be minimal here, right? It's we expose some commands, mm -hmm. and I hope I have less installed. You have a little console here, a little bash. Do I have less installed? Oh, I have less installed. So right. where is that? Is this a view on a remote console, or is this a pretend bash locally? This is we run. Maybe we, should I switch to the quick diagram of yeah, what we're running? Yeah, let's do it if you have a diagram. I have an, uh, a diagram. I have this diagram, right? Okay. Let's make that big on the big screen here. Bigger than big. Okay, let's do that. Okay. okay. So that's your website. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have one entry point, which is actually the the URL to to have to browse it, right? In this case, it's Fishbowl, one of these performance apps that I've written. Sure. Then we see here we have the other development side URL, which mm -hmm. we, we can see looking in the nav bar, it's which slash dev in the end. Okay. okay. Which gives us a second access point to the same file system. Okay. There's your dub dub root, there are files in there. If you browse the site, you come in through here, right? No PHP mm -hmm. ASP.net, and you access that. Right. Monaco is another server here. It's also a node server. And what we do when you, for instance, do a Git operation or when I run less. We, we fork another node process in here mm -hmm. that runs the command. And of course, we, we bring you back this into the browser. So you're giving kind of a little remote uh, invocation. Yes. You're invoking yes. commands, uh, one command at a time. Yes. Yeah. So there's no ongoing context or open shell as I go command, no. enter, no, command, you got enter. It's exactly how it is. We fork one command at a time. We don't keep the state open. But for you as a user, it looks like Yeah, it looks like a persistent shell. Like it's persistent shell. And it's probably more scalable that way, because you're not holding exactly. out in some. Exactly. That's what you don't want to do right in the cloud, sessions and state. So then you went back uh, in the browser and went less C and did your less compilation. Exactly. And if there is an error, right, let's add an error. I think this should work. So we've seen before in previous videos the Kudu console this takes that to another whole level and gives me not only a, a, a console and the ability to move around my application, but live editing, source control, and on and on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you have an older version, Chris. Oh, no, Liz. It's not an error. Oh, I did type wrong. Sorry, where is that file? It's in style sheets. You're getting IntelliSense for your, Files, um, right. your file movement as well. Yeah. Should. Don't know why we don't get it in there right now. That's OK. So people will be able to see this in the portal by the time this video is available. OK. Darn. That's OK. Now I want to now. Okay. See, now you're, it's a challenge? No, no you OK, I'm the at problem. the wrong location. Sorry, I'm still. Well, PWD, right? Oh, sorry. No, CD. Um, public, right? Yeah, see, now we get the completion suggestion. Oh, that's it's a little bit subtle, but yeah, you're well, getting, you're okay, getting you the can, gray. We can do that if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. But this is auto. We also do this in, in code, by the way, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. Now you get suggestion, you can tap through without even getting into This directory is the home directory of what? Uh, is this is the public, uh, the static content of the site, right? Okay. Where all the so JavaScript th stuff is. And I WWW think WWW in here right? you have the style. Yeah, that's the style sheets. Mm -hmm. OK, that we get to now. And the then I want to do. Actually, we have it. I'm sure we have it here somewhere, right? I wonder if I could get to the point where I could run Grunt and Yeoman and other things that are more advanced. But you see now, see, I added yeah, the syntax error, and I get the. Oh, and there's your syntax error. There's the syntax error, and I can just click, and I'm at the error, right? So that's very uh, lightweight uh, yeah, yeah. built in creation. You run the command, you parse the output using some well known patterns, and you get it. So we support Jake, Grunt, but you have to keep in mind, if you remember the picture from below, you right. run in the context of your website. Yes. Which means whatever you do, if you have quotas, mm -hmm. you accumulate and you get charged for that. Right? So in the sense of storage or No, no, no. If you if CPU. you if you build, of course it's consumed oh, CPU I see what you're and saying. it gets charged accumulated under the site site's quota, right? Ah, uh, on the site's quota. Right. Which which I or think the underscores subscription, right? Depends on which one you have. Right. right. So which underscores that the the original point when I said, wait a second, is this live editing in production? He's like, no, no, this is a development environment. Right. right. That can be on its own subscription and managed its own way. And, exactly. And build its own way. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. That's the that's live editing in the Visual Studio Online, uh, formerly codenamed Monaco Editor. Thanks so much, Eric Gamla.
You're welcome. It's Azure Friday.